biology. And uh, uh, so the the biodiversity portal idea when it was first uh, 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 mentioned, uh, I guess back in 2008 or so uh, was when. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, Prabhakar, who's a colleague at Strand, was uh, was very keen on it, and uh, so. Uh, you know, we just couldn't say no to provide that, right? And uh, so, so it's uh, and it's it's sort of grown into the fabric of Strand in some ways. It's uh, it's not it's not an you know an isolated group in any way. It's sort of there. There's interaction. Uh, I guess uh, there's there's there is some advantage that we have probably around sixty computer scientists, or very high caliber people in in the company. And who are always available for consultations and uh, and uh, help of of any kind. So that has probably helped in creating somewhat a, a, a robust platform. Um, so I I think you know from science perspective uh, we are very happy to have sort of hosted uh, some of this larger development effort around the IDP and uh, we'll be happy to continue to do so. And uh, so. Uh, the um, I think, uh, but I now I'd like to go on a slightly different track and uh, just point out why the IBP is remarkable, uh, unique, not just as a biodiversity portal, but as what I might call an experiment in digital archival, right, in this country, because there is, there is, there are very few successful efforts in, in digital archival and uh, <clears throat> and you know of course you already have experienced uh, IBP so so you you, you know a uh, fair amount about it uh, about a uh, few months back I think two three months back uh, Raghavendra Garakar got a message from MHRD and MHRD said you know <clears throat> we have to think about uh, new knowledge systems and new knowledge systems, uh, you know, and what it means to curriculum in higher education and, and so on. And so, uh, important, important terms in, in the history uh, of Indian science. And uh, and uh, and I guess we, if you want to think of what is the current new knowledge system uh, that perhaps we need to catch up on and uh, and make bigger part of our own uh, of, uh, scientific you know, uh, fabric here, it is uh, the fourth paradigm of science. And the fourth paradigm of science is, well the first paradigm is empirical science. The, the, the second paradigm is uh, uh, theoretical science. The, the third paradigm is uh, uh, modeling driven science. And the fourth paradigm is called data-driven science. Right? So, so you know, uh, in in some ways, that that is the new knowledge system that, that we need to uh, we need to sort of, in some sense, catch up on because in, in some ways we have not not done a very good job of uh, you know we keep talking about our sort of IT capability. Connectivity, mobile phones, uh, you know, all of that. But, but, uh, but I think, uh, and to me, one of the big missing uh, elements in why data-driven science is not getting as large as it should is that we don't have enough archival. Okay. Now, why don't we have enough archival going on? And why is it that uh, you know we are not? After all. You know, it's not taken, it's taken dedication, but in terms of resources from a national strategic perspective, this is very small, right? And, uh, and if one really could push that, this is a very critical aspect, uh, then and I think the funds are certainly there. It's, it's just a question of convincing the right people. Um, let me just point out that there is a challenge with archival because you know the 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 archivist okay is a very special person right 
the archivist, you know, essentially, you know, he's a selfless person. <laughs> you know, he's always working for others. Uh, but he's also a very process-driven person. They, they have to be, you know, extraordinarily careful about the sanctity of evidence. They, you know, they have to, to provide without prejudice or afterthought for all who wish to know, right? And uh, this idea of open access uh, and, you know, and I think the balancing act that you have to play with crowdsourcing and bringing data in that gets generated by, from, from multiple sources just so that you can grow the content and you can access content which, you know, just a core team going out would have difficulty accessing uh, is a very attractive idea. I mean, and I think that's the way these, archive, these archives will grow. Uh, but then, you know, how do you ensure that that has a certain scientific and a certain quality? So it's this balancing act of moderation, okay, or oversight, and, you know, and sort of crowdsourcing and uh, submission, uh, and uh, that leads to a high quality archive. So, uh, so I salute uh, the whole IPP effort. I think uh, you have shown that uh, you know we have archivists, <laughs> you know, and uh, and uh, you have created something extraordinary. And I welcome all of you because I think you are the people who are going to make this archive grow and stay alive and be dynamic. And uh, so, so with that, then let the real program start. <laughs> Thank you.